Welcome to Rapidly Aging Tech Bite Size, where we're going to be talking about a RAM card expansion. And I'm filming out of order, but if you look up at the RAM count, you will see that we are counting up to one meg of RAM, 1024 kilobytes of RAM. And I'm going to show you how I've done it in the IBM 5170 PC80. This is the um, DFI RAM card. It has, uh, if I remember right, 72 RAM slots that add up to two megabytes of RAM. So that's each slot with a 256 kilobit chip. Um, the manual recommends either 150 or 120 nanosecond RAM. I found some 120 nanosecond. It doesn't have the horseshoe cutout, but it does have a little circle at the top, and I'm going to assume that that's the top because I can't find anything vintage of the time. Look at the dip switches. They're set up in this configuration. I'm not going to go into detail just because it's, well, fairly long, but I'll give some ideas. You're having to consider between the two switches. Um, the I.O. port address, which apparently doesn't matter if you're doing just extending the conventional and then doing extended RAM. You have to um, find out where the memory address is starting. In this case, the machine is 512K, so we're starting, starting there and moving up. And then we're telling it how much RAM there is, so how many banks have we used, and all that whatnot. And are we doing conventional and extended or expanded memory? And so that's all in the manual. They even give a few examples of where to put things. I'm, I'm starting to kind of like this um, non-plug-and-play stuff. But A, this is a bit tedious because there's so many switches. And B, you need the manual. If I didn't have the manual for this, there'd be nothing to do. I'm hoping that this RAM will work. But um, there's no guarantee because all the recommended particular models in the manual, I can't find any more. So this is what one of them looks like. Oh, there we go, focusing a bit. So it's a simple matter of, it's sort of a simple, a small version of the math code processor in the way it's shaped. So there's 16 pin RAM chips and you just insert it in here. And my hands are probably gonna block everything but I'm going to get one side in. And should you be handling the pins much? No. But am I? Yes. So it looks like that side's in well enough. Start pushing it down. And there we go. So we have three in so far. I'm only going to fill in one bank, which will give me um, 512 kilobytes of additional RAM. If it works, I'm going to get more and fill this thing out. I also have a full 2 megabyte different brand version showing up and I'm hoping I can configure it properly. Alright, the screen is going to be blurry, but I'm going to show you what happens after you put in the RAM card. Assuming you've configured all the switches properly, you now need to go through setup to tell it how much RAM you have. So we're going through the setup disk here and the time is going to be fine. Okay, well that was a mistake, but there we go. All right, so the date is fine, time is now fine. Now, when you go through and select each one of these, originally the base memory size was 512 kilobytes. That's because that's what's in the, in the PCAT. Your initial reaction might be, okay, well, base memory must be what's built onto the machine, and then the expansion memory size is everything above that. Um, so anything coming from an expansion card. You'd be incorrect. Base memory is conventional memory. If your card supports topping off conventional memory, like mine does, and is configured as such, you select base memory as 640 
640 kilobytes. The expansion memory size is then whatever's left over the top of that. So yeah, another inclination might be to say, well, expansion memory size is, well, what's ever on the card, so 512. No, you do 384. If you don't, you get, you get um, memory errors, where it throws a fit and says there's, it'll give you a memory error 164, which is generally that somewhere in the RAM count, um, you have put in something, set up as looking for too small amounts somewhere. So when I initially set this up, I did um, 512, 512. I got the error 164 because the base memory was too small. 512 was incorrect. There was something above it. If you have your memory card configured incorrectly, you'll get an error code that is, um, it'll have a bunch of errors, probably FFFE and error 202. And that's um, the memory check is trying to look, is count, trying to count RAM that's not there. Anyway, so this is how you do it when you add 512 kilobytes of RAM, 640 and 384. This is the RAM card installed. Um, in my next, my actual full length video, when I install other things, I will show the install process. Since it's so long, it actually locks in here. And when you're working on these types of computers, remember, you might want to undo the slots nearby a card in case they try to hang up on each other. In this case, it did. You'll see that this board is primarily empty, except for, I'm using a flashlight here, the bank zero. And uh, I did actually have to correct my switches a bit. I had, um, I had some settings for switch one on switch two and switch two on switch one. But there we go. It's working. Like, subscribe, um, join the Retro Machines group on Facebook, all those things, and I will be having a longer video coming. The sun has got his hat on, hip, 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 hooray. The sun has got his hat on, and he's coming out today. Now we'll all be...